Hi, um, we are happy to introduce a young biologist from Mindanao and from several Facebook comments. He's called a Lodi Kaayo to his friends in the conservation sector. Tristan Senarillos works at the Philippine Eagle Foundation Incorporated as a field biologist. He is also a junior partner at the Philippine Lepidoptera Butterflies and Moths Incorporated. He earned his undergraduate degree in biology, major in ecology at the University of Southeastern Philippines in Davao City. He started his career at the PEF, a student volunteer, where he assisted in information education campaigns, forest guards training, and biodiversity assessments and monitoring. At present, his work mostly re uh, revolves in the field studying wild Philippine eagles across the country, which includes population monitoring, nest search expedition, and Philippine eagle behavioral studies, among others. His research interest includes Philippine biodiversity, conservation biology, wildlife biology, terrestrial ecology, and urban biodiversity. Everybody, let's all welcome Mr. Tristan Luap Senarillas. Tristan? Hi, Sir Flor. Thank you for that kind introduction. So I would just like to share my screen. Thank you. Okay. Again, um, hi, everyone. Good morning. Uh, thank you for um, joining us today, this morning. So I'm so excited to share our work on the birds of the Busa Mountain Range, as well as I'm sharing with you our fieldwork experiences. Now, to start, um, I would just like to give you a brief uh, background about the Busa Mountain Range. Now, the, um, the Busa Mountain Range is one of the key biodiversity areas identified in the Philippines for having an outstanding um, biodiversity. <clears throat> and also it's an uh, important uh, critical watershed areas for the low-lying communities adjacent to the Busa, Busa Mountain Range, both in Sangani and in South Catamata provinces. Um, also, your Busa Mountain Range is um, a refuge for a variety of wildlife. So here I have a few examples now of uh, charismatic wildlife that can be found in the Busa Mountain Range. So first photo is your Amorphophallus sp. Next is your uh, ground orchid, um, Tocoglottis sp. You also have a ginger plant. Next for herpetophon, now we have here an uh, Oriophrydne. Uh, also a pit viper, Gonocephalus. Then um, a Philippine tar here, so the Busa Mountain Range has a, a lot of um, tar shears. It's relatively common in, in the area and a very in a diverse group of invertebrate groups. Um, I'm pretty sure that no, um, you, you already read the news about the rediscovery of a lost species to science. So that's your um, Gutman stream frog. Kukana Gutmani discovered in the Bernard Slope of Mount Musa Range. And also we have another exciting discovery. This is your um, enigmatic um, Eutropis Inglay, uh, which is photographed for almost eight years after its um, uh, discovery. Now this only foreshadows how rich the biodiversity of Mount Musa is. So with that, no, it is um, identified as a high conservation priority site in the country. Now, in terms of bird life, um, the Busa Mountain Range is identified as an important bird area for having a significant number of threatened species and res restricted range species of birds. And <clears throat> with this um, conservation val biodiversity value, you know, the province of Sarangani uh, passed a resolution uh, declaring the Busa Mountain Range as a local conservation area or LCA. So here I have the, the map of the, Busa, the entire Busa mountain range. So as you can see, you know, your Busa mountain range encompasses the provinces of um, South Cotabato at the northern slope and your Sarangani province at the, at the southern slope. So here you can see um, our sampling sites. So in all, we have 10 sampling sites, six of which are in um, the municipality of Itum, while the rest are in Kiamba site. Now, as you noticed, our sampling, six of our sampling sites in Maitum is outside the 
um, TBA and LCA boundaries. So you might be wondering you know, why we uh, and the research here na in fact it's outside naman sa identified um, boundary ng Mount Lusa. Kasi um, this area in Barangay Batian specifically, um, your locals call this area as uh, the Kul Forest. So this is an important um, foraging ground and nesting site of Philippine eagles. So um, to and to have a um, legal protection area since it's outside protected area, no? uh, we work with our partners from um, DNR Senator Kiamba, uh, DNR Region Twelve, um, LGU Itum, and as well as our local communities no, to declare these sites as a critical habitat. Now, by definition, critical habitats, these are um, um, important sites, you know, forest sites, which are um, foraging ground, roosting sites, or nesting sites of a critical endangered species. And in this case, it's your Philippine beetle. Now, here a uh, uh, um, certification you know, passed by the province of Sarangan to declare your Mount as an LCA. And also, in behalf of our DNR partners and um, the municipality of Naitumo, I am pleased to announce that uh, the Jackal Forest, no, the area which we surveyed in Barangay Batian, is um, um, already declared as critical habitat. No? So right now, they're still they're waiting na lang sa Department of Administrative Order. So what has been done? So in terms of uh, bird research, um, surveys were only focused in your northern, northern slope of Mount Lusa Range. So specifically in the Lake Sabu side of Mountain Range and in the south, um, it's relatively understudied because primarily it's a hard to access area. And then um, of course, because of insurgency problems. Now our knowledge on bird life in the Sarangani side is only based um, on the study done by Namukatkat and colleagues in 2015. So here I have a few examples of birds that can be found in the Busa Mountain Range. So uh, this um, first photo is your um, Rufus Paradise Flycatcher, it's a female, it's a very um, flamboyant bird. Next you have your um, Black Nape Monarch, a female one. Then below you have your Red Tail Jungle Flycatcher. <laughs> And then, um, of course, your Philippine pita or your red Philippine pita. So this was observed during our nocturnal sampling in Mount Lusa. So to um, bridge into these gaps, now what we do is uh, we list uh, bird species found in the Lusa mountain range. Now with emphasis on highlighting your species species richness, now the number of total species found in an area, and then um, the number of endemics as well as your certain species. Now we um, did not include to we did not include in our study to record your abundance score because we we have an, an even distribution of sampling efforts per site. So just to avoid bias lang, hindi na naman siya sinali. So yun, um visits were made between August 2018 and 2020 in different forest localities in Mount Lusa Mountain Range. And for surveying birds, you know, we used a pretty standard uh, bird sampling method. So we use point count along two kilometer transect um, in which assessments were done in every 250 meters. We also uh, do opportunistic listing, look and see method, and as well as your, um, which were supplemented by literature review based on the studies of the Mokatkat and colleagues. Now, I would just like to highlight uh, look and see method. So look and see method is uh, not common method in surveying forest birds because look and see method is specialized in um, surveying raptors. So in, in what we do, so when we look at Philippine use now, uh, we, look, uh, we use look and see method. So how we do this, so look and see method is done by, of course, looking a elevated area, a vantage area with a good vantage view of your adjacent forest. So around 90, um, percent forest pa, so panoramic view of the forest. And then it's where we establish our observation posts. And then we do our um, observations daily covering all time strata. Now in places where 
um, your there are no openings, there are no canyons, no, where your forest is very lush, your forest is very thick with um towering trees. So what we did is, you know, we climbed trees to um establish our observation platform. So I have here a video clip to show to you how we do um look at this method atop trees. So um this uh, video no is not in Busa, but uh, this is in Pasunanka Natural Park in Zamwanga City. So it is, so this is um, us now observing a displaying pair of Philippine eagles. So um, this tree is um, around 26 meters above the ground, so it's pretty high. So, um, but you have fear of height, so um, it's not um, recommended uh, to, to try this. Now, uh, what's the advantage of using look and see method in bird surveys? Kasi in look and see method, no, um, taas yung chance that you'll record an individual specialist because no, you're almost eye level sa forest canopy. Now, these um, canopy dweller specialists are difficult to capture using your standard mist netting and then difficult to observe using your standard point count method. But again, in look and see method, no, they're um, easily observed because um, they're very close to your um, um, vegetation and canopy. But the downside of using your um, look and see method in serving forest birds is that um, task yung bias in terms of your um, um, counts of your in, of your individuals. So yun lang yung downside niya. So yun. Um, Sometimes, no, when we uh, observe up hills and sometimes we also uh, cross rivers. So here I have a um, picture of the Batian River. So we had to cross this Batian River to go to our next something area. And you can see in the picture, parang stay lang siya, but in fact, yung um, current niya sa ilalim is very strong. In fact, one of our guide, muti ka ng madala ng current. And um, also, you most of our sampling sites are really hard to access. So the only way to um, puntahan to mga airs is by uh, your habal habal or your sky lab. So just like in the picture. And sometimes we hike for hours. You now we trek for hours just to um, uh, survey these sites. So here I have um, your. Um, our survey team. So, sa left photo, this is your survey team uh, from our 2018 assessment. So, we have our partners from um, ECBC, also partners in DENR Senor Yamba, and DNR partners from DNR Region 12, as well as um, partners in LGU Maitum. Now, sa right naman, I have here Kuya Kir, Pitogo, and Ati Ai. So, this was during our assessment in June 2020 in the Pill Forest. Now, our findings. So, based on our um, first hand observations, you know, as well as your literature review, we've recorded 116 species of birds. Okay. Now, when we look at this table, so based on our um, first hand observation, lang, uh, we've recorded 98 bird species. While uh, Namukatkat et al, during their survey in Kiamba, they've only recorded 59 species of birds. Now, um, for unique records, so these are your records na na record na both studies na. So for etong 57 species, ito yung na record namin na hindi na record nila Namukatkat noon. While they also have um, 18 recorded species na hindi namin na record during the present study. While your 41 species, this, are, this is your species overlap, meaning ito yung mga species na, na record in both studies. Um, now, this 116 species is distributed in 45 families and um, 88 genera. Now, <clears throat> for a residency status, now, you've recorded um, 20 Mindanao endemics, 62 Philippine endemics, 51 residents, two migrants, and one introduced. Now, when we look at your endemism value for Mount Musa, you know, 
in terms of Philippine endemic birds, it scores 53%. So meaning, um, in every 10 bird species you encounter, five of those are Philippine endemics. While um, in every 10 Philippine endemics, endemic birds, no, three of those birds are only confined in Mindanao. So I, so your Mount Musa is um, relatively high in terms of endemic species. Now here I have um, a list of our identified um, common birds found in our sampling site. So I have here um, 20 species. So in identifying your common birds, so what we did them is you know, to jot down your um, presence of species. In each side. So, ito yung mga um, species na present sa lahat ng sampling sites during our present study and also present during the study of Namakatat in 2015. <clears throat> now, I would just like to highlight these three hornbill species. This is your southern rufous hornbill, rift hornbill, and then Mindanao hornbill. So, it is interesting kasi in Mount Musa, these three hornbill species is relatively common. Where in fact, in other places, in other forested areas in Mindanao, um, these horn species are uncommon, even rare na sila sa in, in this place. But in Busa, no, sometimes nasa likod lang sila ng communities. And um, just uh, parang common birds lang. So it's really interesting. So here I have your, again, your bird families. So um, I would just like to highlight no, this bird family. So I have here... Um, your Asipit for day, your hawks, eagles, kites, your Spigi day, your old word house, Aitoni day, your gas owl, your Bosiroti day, your hornbills, Falcone day, your falcons, and of course your other families, which is distributed in 100 species of birds. Now, um, I highlighted these five bird families because uh, these are indicator birds. Now, in Busa, we have a uh, relatively good number of raptorial birds. So this is your owls and then the regional raptors. Uh, what's interesting kasi, these raptorial birds are will not um, breed randomly in an environment. And we also need to um, highlight that um, raptorial birds are your predators. So meaning pag, um, these raptors, mataas yung number nila in certain area. So meaning, your prey abundance on that particular place is relatively good. Now, you, for your owls and hornbills, this, now these are um, cavity dwellers. So meaning, they nest on tree holes. Now, <coughs> your, yung mga trees mo na may large enough tree holes to cater your hornbills and owls, are primarily found in lowland forest and on trees which are old growth. So meaning na your hornbills, owls, and other raptors are relatively common, meaning their nesting requirement and food requirements are meant in Busa mountain range, which we can safely assume that your Busa mountain range is relatively in good condition. Now for um, threatened birds, we've recorded a significant number no, of threatened birds in Mount Busa mountain range. So for IUCN red list, um, we've identified 16 threatened species. Now, um, seven of those are near threatened. And you have um, seven vulnerable, one endangered, and one particularly endangered. Now for endangered, this is your uh, pinstress hawk eagle, while your critically endangered is your Philippine eagle. While for um, DAO 2019-09, the latest, um, Dao. We've recorded um, 19 threatened species. So we have nine um, species identified as vulnerable, then five endangered and five particularly endangered. So the reason of which may be attributed to you know, um, extreme pressures on hunting, your shooting, and the, or habitat loss or both. Now, so here I have a few examples no, of your threatened birds found in Busa. So the first picture I have here, a female Mindanao hornbill, or known before as Terectic hornbill. Now, um, 
The next one is your Southern Rufus Hornbill or your Kalaw. Then next, I have here your female um, Rith Hornbill. Now, in this one, naman, this is your um, Philippine leaf bird. So <laughs> it, it gets its name sa kulay niya parang dahon. Next, you have your Philippine fairy bluebird, no? another lowland specialist, and your Palasisi. So you, um, you might be wondering na bakit endangered na yung <coughs> um, Kulasisi na it's pretty common naman. And in fact, we can observe this in our back, uh, backyard. Kasi um, in the Philippines, we have 10 subspecies of your Kulasisi and two subspecies of it are very rare na. I think, if I'm not mistaken, no, this is your subspecies in um, Cebu and Negro. So, almost, um, bus na sila sa So, that's why, in Dao, it is identified as critical endangered. Now, here you have your um, mga non-threatened species. So, here I have a box spotted flame back. It's a woodpecker. Next, I have your um, Philippine falconet, no, one of the smallest Philippine raptor. So, it, Familia siya ng mga um, eagles. I have here your guayabero. So uh, it's a small parrot no, that loves to feed on guavas. Next, I have here your Philippine serpent eagle, another um, endemic Philippine raptor no, that loves to feed on um, snakes and other small um, um, herbs. Next, I have here your uh, yell yellowish bulbul. Familia ng mga... Uh, yellow water bulbul, yellow vented, mga pero -pero. And here I have your oriental honey buzzard or crested honey buzzard. Now, um, the Busa mountain range is one of the few strongholds of Philippine eagle population in southern Mindanao. Now, um, Philippine eagles have been many times documented in the Busa mountain range. Now, it was first um, documented in Mount Parker in 1960. Then another um, pair was observed in Lakunan and Luhan in Tibuli in South Cotabato. So this is in the northern slope of your Busa mountain range. And also a record was made in Kiamba. Now, <clears throat> when we look at this summary of rescued Philippine eagles, um, this is your summary of rescued Philippine eagles from 1970 to 2019. No, uh, your region 12, where your Mount Busa is located, no, meron siyang um, 17 rescued birds. Now, your region 12 encompasses the mountain ranges of Mount Apo, your Daguma mountain range, your Mount Matutum, and other major mountain ranges in the south. Now, um, now, four of the 17 birds are rescued in Mount Busa in Sarangani Park. Now, during our um latest assessment no we also um observed um wild philippine eagles now here i have um philippine eagle sarangani pride no, it's one of the rescued birds one of the rescued eagles in mount Busa. so um philippine eagle sarangani pride is a male philippine eagle he was rescued in 2017 in barangay batian so the rescued see philippine eagle sarangani pride when he was around uh, less than old, so relatively um, young eagle pa. <clears throat> and then um, your local farmer, with the help of our partners in DNR, uh, turned over the bird to the Philippine Eagle Foundation and brought it back to the Philippine Eagle Center in Davao City for rehabilitation. Then after a year of successful rehabilitation, no, um, we released Sarangani Pride back sa forest where he was found so in Barangay Batian. Then during the release, now we've attached a GPS transmitter and their leg man to monitor the whereabouts of Philippine Eagle Sarangani Pride. Now, another um, rescued bird from Busa Mountain Ridge is Philippine Eagle Sarangani Pride, Maasim Pride, rather. So, um, Maasim Pride was rescued in a, a coastal community. In, in Maasim. And then again, no, it was brought to the Center for Rehabilitation. But unfortunately, um, during the treatment ni Maasim, no, um, it developed aspergillosis, severe aspergillosis, and then um, eventually Maasim died. 
So, ito, during our latest assessment in June 2020, no, in the Kill Forest in Barangay Batian, we were able to um, document a individual and we assume that this is your nesting pair that inhabits the Kill Forest as a nesting site. So this is the first eagle that we've photographed. So um, during the observation, you know, um, this is really interesting encounter because it's a very close encounter. Um, yung bird is around 20 meters lang from our vantage point. So ganun ka kalapit. Then after lumabas yung forest mo from the riparian forest below, now it, it soared above us and then um, flew to your adjacent forest and then perched in the canopy. And then your um, another individual eagle emerges from the same direction. We assume that this is your male eagle and then um, with a similar behavior, it um, spiraled, you now riding your thermals, then it soared and then perches in the forest in front of us. <clears throat> now, and this photo, I have here your, um, the latest addition to your Philippine eagles of Mount Busa range. So this is a juvenile eagle less than a year old, which was documented by our partners in DNR Center of Kiamba. So you can see, you know, we can identify that this bird is juvenile based on the feather morphology. So medyo pointy pa siya and marami pa siyang white na downy feathers. So it's one of your indication na relatively juvenile for yung bird. Now, so it is interesting kasi um, during our survey last June, nung nakita namin yung dalawang eagle, nung time na pala yun, um, they already have your eaglet na pinapalaki. So this is your eaglet now already uh, flown off the nest. Now, it, it is interesting to highlight that um, all rescued Philippine eagles in Mount Musa Range are immature birds. So meaning, um, these are your floater birds, meaning this is your exist birds that have not yet found their partners and territory of their own, or Philippine eagles or eaglet that just have recently flown off the nest. So meaning, your Philippine eagles in Mount Busa Range is um, continuously breeding. Okay, so they produce viable offspring across the years. Now, um, given the large stretch of forest in Sangan province, now it is possible that your municipalities of Kiamba and Maasim has also a nesting pair of eagles that are yet to be discovered. Kasi wala pang makikitang pair ng Philippine eagle dito in sa barangay, uh, sa ma maitong lang. Now this uh, opens door for an opportunity to conduct um, Philippine eagle expeditions and locate these nesting sites. Kasi again, your Philippine eagles are very loyal to the places where they nest. So they have really strong site fidelity. Now, if you want to protect your um, Philippine eagle, of course, you want to protect yung nesting site mo so that um, we can ensure that your um, pair of eagles can continuously breed across the years. Now, so for species and habitat conservation issues, now the forest of southern Mindanao um, reduced more than 50% of the original forest cover. And mostly in our um, places visited, no, your adjacent community is primarily um, dependent on agri agricultural practices such as um, Indian. And then they also harvest um, hatch materials like rattan and bamboo and bamboo. Now in one of our um, something sites, no, uh, we were able to document a freshly killed Southern Rufus Hornbill in Sankil, Sankil area. So, so we've interviewed yung local, no, anong gagawin dito, sabi nila, um, for sustenance. Now, um, we were able also to document an immature Philippine serpent eagle. Um, sanay na siya sa tao, or imprinted na, which was removed um, likely from the nest. Then, also your local communities in Booster Range is um, also kept birds in cages. So yung inaalagaan nila mostly is yung, yung 
Kula Sisi or yung Philippine Honey Parrot and your White Eared Brown Dog. So yun, so this, yung hunting and shooting and trapping is identified as your principal short-term threats to your bird um, species and bird samatin range. And while your um, aiming and shifting cultivation is identified as the long-term threat to the um, birds and habitats in the bush. So mostly, um, aiming and um, any practices happens in the lower slope of Mount Medusa. So here, um, now these issues were um, primarily addressed now by our partners in DNR Sanyo Kimba and also our partners in um, Maitum LGU. So um, they, using their um, national greening program, no, so they have these um, productivity enhancement, which they um, distributed ma Fruiting trees, affluent communities, you know, to help them in their um, livelihoods. And also, they um, conduct um, community education and public awareness campaigns in communities adjacent to forest. Also, the DNR and MLG Maitum um, have these forest gardening initiatives in which they have this group of um, local forest guards, which um, patrol your forest and then apprehend illegal uh, hunters and loggers. And um, right now, no, our partners in Maitum, Kiamba, Maasi, DNR are really working hard no, to declare or Mount Busa as protected area because right now, hindi pa siya part ng protected area. No. So, um, Right now, no. Um, they're really working hard to include it in the INAIPA. So hopefully this year, ma, ma, masali na siya. <clears throat> and then your ethnoornithology. So, um, in this part, no. Um, in every survey, so really give emphasis in um indigenous knowledge. So for example, uh, when we survey for birds, we have um guide na kasama so. Mga tibuli, usually yung mga nasubusa. And then we asked them their local um, name for, for the birds we observed. So for example, um, yung Philippine eagle nila, yung tinatawag nila na banog kalabaw. Meaning, banog, which means eagle, kalabaw, grande, malaki, so malaking eagle. Then you have your crested honey buzzard, they call it in tibuli as kofei nukag. Um, kofei, uh, a smaller raptor, smaller than your banyog, and nuhag mini mamuhag in Bisaya. So, mamuhag kung puchukan kasi uh, one interesting behavior of your crested honey buzzard is that it feeds on the larva of your um, mga honeys, honeybees. So, it attacks the honeycomb. So, mamuhag puchukan. Now, rusty, rusty breasted cuckoo. So, they call this a meat of fee because of its really distinct call. Um, I think, no, for those of you na um, always go to forest, I'm sure na you already heard the call of this bird. So it's really um, distinct. So uh, it's like this. Yon, meat, ufi, so yon. You have also your black meat oriole or your call this tuliao because again of its uh, very distinct call. Yon, parang whistling call. Um, here, Pesto Jongo, so they call this Tolos Iwas. So, um, in Tiboli, your Iwas means uh, manok or bird. Now, Iwas means uh, umilag or gives warning. And in other places in Mindanao, no? for example, in Zamboanga, in Chabacan term, they call her Pesto Jongo as your Paharo El Chongo. Paharo means bird, Chongo means monkey, Rungoy. And then in other places in in Davao, they call this your um, babag saya. Now, what's interesting kasi, uh, each of your um, IP communities have different tribes, have different themes for this bird, but isa lang yung meaning. Kasi daw, um, uh, to, when this bird uh, gives your call, it gives warning to your monkeys na may um, threat sa, pali sa paligid. So, yun. Now, you also have your um, yellow-breasted fruit dove. They call this ubun because of its um, large call. Uh, Philippine archer, tahaw. Philippine trogon, tambalala. 
Southern Rufus Hornbill, Busek, and then Buff Spotted Flame as Clelet. Now, what's the value of um, incorporating your local knowledge in conservation? Because um, we believe that when we want to empower community, local communities to join our cause in conservation, dapat we need to um, make a connection ba? No? Kasi um, if we only introduce them their scientific names, local names, um, parang foreign to sa kanila. But when we um, um, incorporated this local knowledge, no, mas my sense of connection, my sense of involvement, my sense of yung participation nila. So um, by that, no, mas they will um, participate sa sa cause na to conserve these birds. And also in doing this, you can also gather um, significant data which you cannot read in any literature because these are first-hand knowledge from your um, partnered IP communities. Now, <clears throat> what's the importance of inventory studies? Um, mostly because um, inventory studies are not given attention that much, that much attention because you know, for, for other people, it's, okay, you just identify birds, you identify other wildlife, and you know, but in fact, inventory studies is your baseline for conservation. Because again, you cannot protect what you do not know. You cannot conserve what you don't know sa certain area, di ba? So it provides your baseline information for um, policy makers, you know, especially sa mga LGUs. So yun, um, again, inventory study is really important. So I hope you know, na more inventory studies are um, conducted in in Mindanao, particularly in least um, studied places and areas. Now, um, recommendations and future plans. So again, despite our very um, rapid survey of bird presence in Busa mountain range, um, our findings really um, highlights that your Busa mountain range is um, have a great number of species, of bird species, as well as your endemics and threatened species. Now, um, with that, no, we recommend that additional survey should be conducted primarily on, on other places that have never been visited so that um, more, mas mataas yung something effort. And again, to avoid bias against your highly cryptic species. And, and then um, again, um, reforestation initiatives. It's very important by using yun so mga sama na identified na open areas mga na kainin so we can um, <clears throat> plant trees using your native trees no? and develop um, sustainable farming methodologies which will ensure you know, the, the long term survival of your lowland forest in Mount Busa. And next, uh, research on polynomial species. So mostly of our recorded species are only confined to lower elevations below 1,000. So these are your lowland um, specialists and much of the biology and ecology of these birds are poorly known. So um, example of that is your Philippine eagle owl, your Philippine leaf bird, your um, Pinsker's hawk eagle, which is already endangered species now. Um, research on these um, birds are really scarce. So um, I think it's, it's time na na there should be a research that focuses on this poorly known uh, species. And of course, um, conduct Philippine eagle surveys in areas with historic records of Philippine eagle sightings. Kasi, um, so that we can determine you know, your um, breeding density or um, population density of Philippine eagles in entire mountain range. So this all also includes you know, your the northern slope of Busa in, in and in Sarangan, so that when we can determine your full population density now, so we can again um, um, apply your appropriate conservation measures now to protect these um, important forest um, habitats. Now, before I'll end, I would just like to give our sincere thank you to our partners in Sen Kiamba, especially to um, Seno Dr. Ali Hajinasir to Ma'am 
uh, Jing, Ma'am Jessica, to uh, Ma Maria Tubera, to Sir Edgar Calderon for assisting us in the field, and the rest of uh, the DNR Senior Camera partners. Also, I would like to thank our partners from LG Maintum. So we have um, from Beth and Ramos and Men of Sir um, Nanette National for their um, well, warm welcome during our field work in Sarangan. Also, I would like to give thanks to um, Attorney Felix Alisser, the Regional Director of Region 12, and to Sir uh, Ronald Lacanaria and Sir Abdul Afar Dumande for also assistance during the 2018 field work. So, um, uh, yun lang po, dagang salamat. All right. I mean, salamat sa iyo, Tristan, for that... Uh... Very interesting presentation, actually. Well, so envious because, uh, siguro mabibilang lang sa taliri lang siguro ng ng tao kung ilan lang nakakita ng Philippine Eagle in the Wild. No? And uh, tapakaswerte mo, swerte yung line of work mo. And I think it's very uh, not only exciting but also rewarding, no? especially for a for a uh, ornithologist uh, such as you. Okay, so uh, we will proceed with the open forum. Okay, um, you can put your questions uh, on the chat box, and I have also listed some questions here. Um, first of all, uh, I have a comment from wait from Mom Jessica Gilliao. I don't know if you know he, her. Yes, po. Uh, okay. uh, yes, okay. So she says that uh, please uh, provide a power, uh, provide a copy of your report or your PowerPoint to the uh, DNR Penro Alabel Sarangani Province. So I, I think she's okay. So she asked me if we could provide a copy of this uh, recording. Uh, please be reminded that we will be uploading this to our YouTube channel. But for Bam Jessica's uh, 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 favor, I please uh, provide your PowerPoint to her. Okay. So, Ma'am Jessica Gilia was uh, formerly with uh, formerly a Chief Conservation and Development Section uh, Officer at San Roquiamba, and now she's transferred to DNR Penro Alabel. So, okay. So, okay. And one of her recommendations uh, she posted here on the chat box for no uh probably to create a bandai gubat for the philippine eagle philippine eagle or eagle watchers um wala bang program on that um, for for the lgus I, I i guess the the areas controlled or monitored by the philippine eagle foundation merong mga watchers how about the lgus um actually meron naman pong mga bandai gubat na na identified in in maitum so Ang yung may authority po doon si yung uh, Menro Maitum and your forest guard is also um, part ng project ng DNR sa Nokemba. So they monitor this um, forest no to, to patrol for um, illegal activities yun po. But uh, in PEF naman po in other places where we monitor Philippine eagles uh, may mga forest guarding initiatives din kami. So we train local forest guards no. So uh, in third, sila yung nagbabantay ng mga important nesting sites. I see. So usually, ito mga watchers ba, ay, are they, yung stipend ba nila, are they provided by the LGUs or companies? Most, um, these are your volunteer forest guards. But of course, we need to be practical. So what we did is that uh, we lobbied to partners no, so that may mga mag-getter na incentives doon sa mga mga volunteer forces so para may matanggap ng din po sila. Yes, okay. Uh, so shout out lang na lang siguro sa ating mga corporates uh, uh, sa mga mayroong mga CSR programs. I think uh, this would be a very opportune time for you to support the conservation efforts for not only the Philippine eagle but for other ano, endangered vulnerable uh, bird species uh, particularly there in Sarangani province. Okay. Uh, we have we have uh, King Ombrisa of the School of Environmental Science and Management from UP Los Banos, and he wants to answer a live question. King, 
Hi po, good morning. Good morning, Kim. Yanong Yusef yan. Hi, sir. Yusef. Okay. I have a question po. There are recent new sightings of Philippine eagle population in Tinoy and Forest in Surigao. Are there any updates about the researches conducted in the area? And if there are, what is the current situation of the population on the area, knowing that it has been years since the last sighting? So uh, thank you, King Nofer, for that. So actually, I'm um, happy. Um, so um, again, sorry for that loss. No? So again, um, I'm happy to announce that um, I'm part of the team who um, joined the survey team to um, observe your the Philippine societies in Tinoy and Paul. So um, during the latest assessment lang last March um, 8 to 10, um, the PEF, along with your, again, your DNR partners and then LGU partners, we've uh, documented a two-month-old eaglet in Tinoy and Paul. Now, um, this nesting site was um, discovered um, around 2007, if I'm, if I'm not mistaken, then recently lang, no? Um, Nagnes sila in the same place. So that's why nag-report yung mga partners natin na IP communities doon. So, so far, yung forest mo doon sa area is relatively good. Intact naman siya. And then, <clears throat> very empowered yung mga yung local communities doon to, to protect these um, eagle habitats. In terms of your population status, siguro in Surigao, um, I cannot, we cannot answer it pa kasi, again, it, it, um, it's difficult to determine your breeding population if we cannot locate your nesting sites. So, so far, what we know is that um, you have a nesting site in Bisley, and then other places in Surigao, may mga eagle records, but no nesting sites pa ang nalolocate. I see. Okay. I hope that answers your um, question, King. Okay. Uh, all right. From uh, Kier Pitogo, um, question. Uh, since there are historical records in the South Cotabel, South Cotabato portion of the Busa mountain range. Uh, do you have any plans to extend your study on the other side? Um, hi, Kuya Chir. Thank you for that question. Um, yes, po, um, meron na may mga uh, may interest actually, but again, uh, we're still looking for of course your, your funding, funding support no, to do this um, eagle expeditions kasi again, um, conducting Philippine eagle survey is really costly so yun um si pag may magpan why not so we can uh, perhaps partner it all right with, um pasu alabel uh, alabali probably uh siguro for the, you know just can you give us a you know ballpark figure figure on how much one expedition uh like say for example a one week expedition how much would it cost um, it depends po, sir, sa area. So it's really site-specific. But mm -hmm. for example, it, during our sur Philippine Eagle survey in Zamora City in Pasunaka Natural Park, so usually yung cost namin for a month umaabot ng around 200. Mm -hmm. po. So kasali na dyan yung mga quarter fees, guild guide fees, accommodation, etc. Yun po lahat na. Yeah, but, so yung mga may... <coughs> May, may gusto mag-propose ng mga researches at saka study like uh, you know considerably uh, similar to Tristan's uh, study siguro yun nga mag-prepare na kayo around 200 200 to probably a quarter of a million to hold that uh, very extensive uh, monitoring uh, uh, activities for one month okay. so from uh, we have a question from Miss uh, Magella Bautista. So, what books will you recommend for Philippine bird species? Are you available for bird identification for student thesis? Hi, Mom Jade. Good morning. Um, si Mom Jade po is one of my professors during my undergrad. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, for bird references po, Mom Jade, no, um, I highly recommend the Kennedy Guide. So, although outdated na siya, but still very useful. And then um, right now, may na 
publish na bagong book by Sir Desmond Allen. So, in this book, may mga na-update na yung species list nung mga nasa Kennedy Guide na split na siya in several species. So, andun siya sa new book. So, it's also good reference. And um, of course po, um, I'm very willing to have our um, bio students from Yusuf po. Oh, Yusuf lang? Wala nang iba? <laughs> um, um, other schools din po. <laughs> okay. Uh, incidentally, uh, Desmond uh, emailed me and he wants me to ask you uh, if you have any bird call recordings. Um, yes po. Um, well, I already contacted Sir Desmond. No? So, yes po, uh, we have a um, few uh, bird recordings for... So, few lang, not all. Kasi, again, when you search for birds, sometimes you flash them away before you know, they can um, reproduce this call. So, we have these recordings and we haven't uploaded it yet to any database. So, mm -hmm. na, once ma-compile na yung lahat ng um, bird calls, so, um, we will upload it po sa database. Yeah, and probably to what database would you, you know, make it available? Um, siguro po sa Senokanto. Kasi Senokanto. Senokanto po. Yeah, that's one of the things that we. That's one of the things that you know, Filipino Filipino scientists and bird watchers should have. You know, parang may dapat mayroong project eh on on, on compiling these bird calls uh, rather than hosting them to other sites. Oh, but it depends on their use actually. But it's a it's a dream that uh, uh, a lot of bird watchers and birders uh, that they would like to have. You know, we have our own compilation or database okay uh question uh i think this is a comment or comment question from mom jessica Giliao. the dnr had a regular quarterly monitoring of philippine eagle uh which is embodied in their I, I, wfp but hiring of philippine eagles is not included uh, philippine eagle watchers, watchers. <laughs> It's not included. So, our, as partners in conservation protection, can we request, you know, from the PEF some personnel or individuals as uh, eagle watchers? Um, yes, po. Pwede naman po. So, oh, what we can do best, po, ma'am, is to you know, request assistance. So, we write letter to our um sa sa taas namin. So, perhaps what we can do is that you now we will um you know, conduct yung um, training on eagle surveys, eagle population monitoring so that we can yun, capacitize your um, DNR personnel and so sila na itong nag-monitor ng mga Philippine eagles in your area of jurisdiction. Yeah, so mahirap din yun kasi logistics wise. Uh, mahirap din for PEF to, to provide that service. Although, yun nga, to make sure that yeah, the LGUs and other uh, DNR regional offices, the Penros, can be capacitated or given some training on how to at least uh, not only provide the uh, training for monitoring, but for also identification and other other things that is important for uh, assessments. Okay, from uh, Paul Henrik Goho Cruz of uh, Central Luzon State University. Uh, the question is, uh, the consumption of wild birds is part of the culture of many indigenous people. And how can we mitigate the effects of hunting, trapping on the population of birds, especially to those raptorial birds, since they are often hunted for food and at times considered as pests kasi nangangain daw ng, ng manok. So what, is, what are your thoughts on that? Um, thank you enough for, for that question. Yes, um, it is true that um, our partnered IP communities have the rights no, to hunt because it's part of their IPRA law. So um, what we do is that um, when we partner communities, especially in areas with, near your nesting sites, so what we do is that um, we have this called um, culture-based conservation. So um, we partner with them, we identify yung mga species important to them. And then yun, um, and sometimes we... Um, help them plan out kung ano yung mga pwede nang gawin like they can hunt on a certain time of the year lang so that maiwasan yung mga uh, breeding birds na mahunt and then for and of course yung um, immediate um, um, uh, education campaigns so we give them education campaigns po. 
Yeah, I I think meron dapat siya ang ganun. It's like uh diyan ba sa areas niyo meron na bang off season, on season for for hunting? Meron na ba mga local laws or ordinances that support that uh you know, respecting the rights of our uh, indigenous peoples to hunt but as well as uh, ba- balancing everything out para naman hindi maubos sa god. So, yun nga, mayroong mga nagsasabi na there should be an open season and a closed season for hunting. Um, yes, sir. Um, in fact, um, in many places where we part the communities, so that's what we do, especially in, in Kidnon and in Arakan and in Mount Apo, Mount Mindres. Okay. From Michael Dan Superior, uh, congratulations po, Sir Tristan. As someone who is usually in the field, Any tip on how to adjust in the community? Uh, any tips on how to engage with the community when it comes to conservation? So, siguro it um, practical lang na very practical lang. So when we uh, engage in your sa community, yung maging honest ka lang ano yung purpose mo to, to with them. Because it's really important. Because um, mostly, na rinidinig namin sa kanila that um, there are certain private organizations and NGOs that work with them. But parang again, yung plastikan lang. And then after that, wala na. But if you want to make your um, connection with these people, so really need to be honest, no? Um, be friends with them. Yun lang magpakatuto. <laughs> Siguro. So uh, from Nympha, Branzuela, hi Tristan, congrats for a job well done. Question, question is, do you have a plan for a study in Talengod, Davao del Norte, particularly in Pantaro, in the Pantaron range? Um, hi Ma'am Nympha, so nakasama ko si Ma'am Nympha before sa PASA assessment. So um, actually Ma'am Nympha, no, we're, we have a project right now sa Pantaron, but in San Fernando, mm-hmm. mas palit of San Fernando. In fact, um, This coming April, no, my activity tired on. We're going to release your uh, one of field and then conduct also your biodiversity monitoring in uh, certain barangays in San Fernando, which is also part of your Pantaron range. But again, in um, Talaingon side, um, I'm not familiar pa, so baka soon po meron na. Okay, so this is a similar question from Magella Bautista and Mechi Me Corpus Abenoha. Um, thank you for your recommendations and willingness to help uh, students. Uh, uh, would you be open or willing to work with uh, students and others for research collaboration? Or can you give out invitations or opportunities to work with you or your organization during uh, these expeditions? Um, yes, ma'am. Very open naman po yung for partnership so uh, I get so yun po um, just um, send lang yung letter of invitation siguro sa, sa office namin and then perhaps we can arrange it kung paano yung um, arrangement na mm-hmm. okay so from Yolanda Angeles uh, for the endangerment or for the endangered and endemic species of birds in the area what uh, do you have a do you know what is the actual rate of disappearance of those species For the last five years, do you have do you have data? Um, so far we do not have any data for uh, the disappearance rate. So perhaps, what, ma'am, uh, we can do this you know, as part of the recommendation for the future steps in future studies. We can we can. Okay, from Dana Ian Alcantara, how often should surveys be done in these areas, and how long do these surveys and field work would have to take? Um, hi Dana, good morning. So, um, usually when we do Philippine eagle surveys, po, um, minimum days talaga to, to look for Philippine eagle is two weeks. So, and sometimes uh, sa two weeks na to, wala pa kami nakikita ng Philippine eagle. So that's why um, needed talaga na mas taas yung something effort. Mo. So that's why we stay in forest sa field for um, a month or more than a month pa just to look for for eagles. And it's best to look for Philippine eagles during your breeding season kasi that's yung chances mo na ma- makikita mo talaga sila. Alright. So any more questions from the audience? Ako, may questions ako. Uh, pr- probably for clarifications lang. Um, you've, you've mentioned the 
the literature that you have always always uh, referred to is was by Namukatkat. So I'm asking, is it already published? Was it is it a published material? Um, the a reference for you know, mm-hmm. Namukatkat is a gray literature. It's not mm-hmm. published. So this is a biodiversity assessment report mm-hmm. by an academic which is um commission the commission sila ng DNR. Mm-hmm. So dun sa results results nila before we use it as a reference no so uh, we review it and found no uh, no dubious results naman po sa list okay. so i think uh, the results that you have provided wait wait yung kay namukatkat was is it the same area that you have al- already surveyed or is it another part of the busa mountain range yung na survey po nila namukatkat sir is in kiamba only in one mm-hmm. so during the present study we also did another um, study on, on that area. Po. Okay. And it's good that you, you have already published this in the Philippine Journal of Science, right? So this would be a more valid... Not, not We're not taking away the validity of the study of Namukatkat, but uh, in terms of, you know, uh, references and the citation, it is really important for uh, your references to be published, right? So um, from Dana again, and when do these breeding seasons usually take place if you want to survey um, birds in that area? So again, uh, your different species of birds have different breeding seasons. So siguro what I can share lang is about your Philippine eagle. So um, breeding season for Philippine eagle starts in September and and magyan siya ng February. But again, your pre-laying stage, so ito yung time na nag per chip display yung two birds, so it usually happens in June and July. And in September, they start egg-laying na September, October. Your brooding stage, or nag na yung female. And by um, December 1st week to January, my um, expected na may chicken na sa nest, mga a month old. And then after nag-hatch siya, na mga four months old, so it can flow off the nest na. But still dependent sa parent. Yeah. All right. So this is a, a, a comment from uh, Sir Paul Goho Cruz. Uh, he thanks you for the answer. And that's actually a good idea. That's the, the one regarding the coordinating with the, uh, with the indigenous people. So coordinating with the IPs regarding suitable hunting season, maybe it can be done in Luzon too. So congratulations. So any more questions from our audience? And while we wait for other comments and suggestions, um, can I ask, um, well, you have mentioned uh, indicator birds, uh, particularly the raptorial types. So have you been able to correlate uh, what are the important prey items, which can also be found as vulnerable or probably listed as uh, listed in the IUCN. Can you correlate uh, the presence of these raptorial birds or these indicator birds with the uh, prey items, which probably, baka naman nagkataon, hindi nyo siya nakita, pero there's a correlation that, for example, if you see this kind of bird, you also see that prey. So were you able to do that? Um. Thank you for thank you, sir, for your question. So far, sir, um, in all raptorial birds, no, yung Philippine eagle lang natin is well studied. Mm-hmm. Uh, in other species, the rest, 30 species of diurnal birds, relatively poorly studied. So, um, in terms of yung prey items of Philippine eagles, may mga uh, data na tayo dyan. So, for example, when we um, survey for a particular area. So what we did first is that to conduct a prey-based assessment. So um, what is your prey-based assessment? So this assessment is parang um, standard um, biodiversity inventory lang. And then uh, with that, no, we will identify yung mga um, prey species or prey items ng Philippine Eagle based dun sa feeding habit studies na ginawa namin while we observe yung uh, Philippine Eagle's nest. So for example, <clears throat> When there is a presence of um, long-tailed macaques and your sinusipalas valance, your um, kalugo, falangimor, also you have a good number of um, um, civet, civet cat, your paradisolas and your vivera. 
and also other larger species of birds like are uh, like a hornbill. So it's most likely that these um, areas are suitable for Philippine eagles. But again, we should um, consider that we need to look for other parameters as well, like your elevation, for example. So, um, yung <clears throat> mga, if your forest uh, may mga, may good number pa ng prey items, and then it's mm -hmm. a lowland forest, and malalaki pa yung puno, so most likely it's a suitable nesting site for Philippine eagles. And for your questions sir, about yung correlation, so in terms of yung parang sa math, yung statistics na part na, so wala pang medyong study about doon. But yeah. for um, prey habit studies, meron na tayo for Philippine eagles. But for other actors, wala pa tayo. I, I think that would be a good, ano, ano, a good uh, research gap for you to mm -hmm. answer. No? Kasi rather than trying to look for this vulnerable uh, species of birds na alam natin, for example, they're cryptic na mahirap talaga hanapin. Pero if there's a strong evidence that uh, the, if the predator is there, then probably there's a mm. very good chance that the that bird that in question is also there. Yes, parang, parang ganun lang. Mm. Although I'm not familiar with that, but uh, it's something that you know, uh, birders can look at. Look at. Okay. So um, any more questions from the audience? Okay, if none, uh, we'll be wrapping up our program. Let me just say thank you to everyone, to all our participants. Our, we, all, we almost reached uh, 100 participants. And of course, thank you to Tristan for accepting our invitation. I know, baka pagod ka pa because uh, Tristan just came from, from field work. Kararating lang nila. So that's why nandyan lang siya sa hotel sa Bacolod City. So maraming salamat. Akala ko hindi kita makokonta kasi nasa bundok ka pa pala. Uh, yun sir, uh, buti nga nakababa na from field work. Okay, okay. So uh, before we end the program, uh, I posted at the chat box the link to the evaluation form. So please, uh, while we're here, click on that and make sure that you evaluate our webinar so that you can receive a certificate of participation. Uh, if you have problems with that, uh, just drop us an email later. So, And uh, the form will be available only at, uh, until 3 p.m. All right. So, um, okay. Thank you very much, Sir Tristan. Uh, the Museum of Natural History, Office of the Vice Chancellor for Research and Extension here at UP Los Baños, College Laguna, awards this Certificate of Recognition to Tristan Luap Sinarillos for serving as a resource person uh, today during our 2021 MNH Biodiversity Seminar on Bird Observations in the Busa Mountain Range, Sarangani Province, Philippines, held 22 March 2021 from 10 a.m. to 11.30 a.m. Philippine Standard Time. And in witness whereof, the signature of our director is here on to a fixed given today, uh, March 22, 2021, College Laguna, Philippines, signed by our director, Marian P. De Leon. And uh, make sure that you are able to evaluate our webinar. If, you would, uh, if you're going to evaluate it later, just uh, remember our bit.ly link it's at bit.ly slash 2021-bss-eval, and we will accept responses until 3 p.m. today. Uh, do visit our website at mnh.uplb.edu.ph and if you want to drop us uh, any for any kind of message, so you can write us at mnh.uplb.edu.ph. Um, we are, you can see us at uh, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, and Instagram. Just look for the handle UPLB Museum. We will be uploading the recording of our uh, webinar later today. Hopefully, we we can upload it today and uh, do check our articles on the UPLB Museum of Natural History at Wikipedia and TripAdvisor. So with that, maraming salamat po. Thank you very much. And Sir Tristan, maraming salamat for accepting our invitation. Everybody, uh, tomorrow mayroon pa ho kami isang webinar. Uh, do check our Facebook for future announcements of our future webinars.